Hello again. Welcome to what just so happens to be the 50th episode of this podcast. To celebrate this momentous occasion, I'm going to attempt to address something I feel is near and dear to every photographer's heart, and that is the answer to the question, what would be something cool and new and different to go out and shoot today? Admit it, we've all had one of those days when you find yourself staring at your beloved camera, wanting to go out and take some great pics, but suddenly realize that you have no idea whatsoever what to shoot. It's sort of how a novelist feels when he's having a case of writer's block, or being all dressed up and nowhere to go. Well, this sort of dilemma has probably happened to all of us at one time or another, and is one of the biggest complaints I get from my students. They sometimes even go one step further and say, and I quote, There just isn't anything around here to photograph. Our town is so boring. Well, it's my job as a teacher not to cave into their whining, even though deep down inside I can feel their pain. Some of us don't live in places that could be considered the most photogenic places in the world, and that can therefore lead to the pat conclusion that there isn't anything around the photograph. And that sort of attitude, my friends, is neither true nor acceptable. The purpose of this lesson is to help those of you who have an occasional case of what we'll call shooter's block to get some relief from your suffering to assure you that no matter how boring or nondescript your neck of the woods may be, there are always things out there worthy of your time to photograph. One of the best suggestions I can offer is to sit down and give all this some thought before you even step out of your house. Remind yourself that photography is an art form and that your camera is simply a tool to be used to allow you to express yourself through a visual medium. If you're sitting there clueless on what you want to express, one thing you can do is find some inspiration in something as simple as a single word. Several years ago I discovered an online photo scavenger hunt of sorts called 26 Things. The site that sponsored it is shift.org and although 26 Things is evidently not quite as active as it used to be, the site sponsors other online photo contests as well. The idea is to take the list of 26 words that the creator has drawn up and try to express the meanings or essence of those words photographically in creative ways. A while back I decided to create a worksheet for one of these lists then tried it out on my advanced photo students. The results were wonderful. So let's take a look at one of these lists and see what we can come up with. Okay, here's part of one list and I'm just going to start brainstorming here. How about something used? That's the first word. Well, let me think. How about an old junk car? Like from a junkyard. That might be cool. Old Packard or something like that. And I've got an old typewriter up in the attic. Might do a still life shot of that. That could be kind of cool. I've never done anything like that before. Okay, next thing is can't live without. What can none of us live without? Well, we can't live without water. So something with water. How about maybe a blurred motion shot of water? like in a creek. That might be cool. Or the dam over on the other side of town. Take the tripod? Why not? That's not such a bad idea. So that's sort of the mindset you want to have when using one of these lists. Simply take a word, give it some thought, and run with it. If you think that this is something you might want to try out sometime, just email me and I'll send you a link to where you can download a compilation of several 26 things lists I've made. All of you app owners can access the file in the bonus section for this lesson. Another way to come up with ideas for shooting is to try something that I require all my advanced students to do each year, and that is to choose a focus area or a theme to pursue. I tell them to brainstorm all the things they can think of that they are passionate about and are important to them. For example, something like music or the environment or sports. Then they have to narrow down their list to one thing that they feel they can successfully express photographically throughout the year. Some of them think this is unfair because it seems so limiting to what they can do. But that isn't true, I tell them, because it forces one to continuously discover new ways to express the same theme. This can be done in a number of different ways through the use of different techniques, different genres of photography, and so on. By the end of the year, most of them agree that this system has made them better photographers. Speaking of techniques, this is perhaps the best suggestion I can give to those of you who feel they have shooter's block. Throughout the history of this podcast, I've introduced several different photo techniques that you could try, and I haven't even scratched the surface yet. 
To think like an artist is to keep your mind open to all the different ways you can express yourself over and beyond the simple digital photograph. As you explore the possibilities out there, think beyond simply capturing an image in color. Instead, ask yourself, would this make a good black and white shot? Would this entire scene make a good joiner or an HDR image? Maybe I could make a salt print or a cyanotype with this image. There are no limits to how you can express yourself through photography. All you need to do is think beyond the present and the obvious and keep your options open to try new techniques or in some cases old techniques. What I've been doing throughout this lesson is taking a walk through my neighborhood with my video camera looking for things to photograph. There is sort of an art to this because you have to keep your eyes open to anything that might be a potential art piece. Which leads us to another angle of shooting, which is to be aware of what makes an object art in the first place. Did you know that all visual art pieces are made up of just seven simple art elements? These are the building blocks of art, the raw materials that all visual artists have to work with, whether they be painters, drawers, sculptors, and so on. They include line, shape, form, texture, color, space, and value. Think of the design principles also, which are the ways that you put the art elements together. These include composition, balance, contrast, rhythm, movement, pattern, repetition, unity scale, and so on. Good design is often the difference between a so-so photograph and a work of art. How you put those seven art elements within your frame can mean the difference to a viewer appreciating the piece or simply glancing at it and moving on. Composition is arguably the most important design principle. What you include or exclude in a shot and how it's placed in the frame is huge. Is it balanced or unbalanced? Is there a clear focal point and elements that lead the viewer's eyes from the focal point to the rest of the composition and back again? All of these compositional considerations are made either consciously or subconsciously by the artist. And clearly, the more aware one is of these things, the sooner it becomes second nature. Now, back to the art elements. As I walk along, one art element has caught my attention over there across the street. The bright blue color of the fire hydrant and the orange of the tiger lilies make them stand out against the drab green of the grass. So I'm going to go over to see what I can do with these subjects. As I draw closer to the fire hydrant, more art elements become obvious. The individual geometric shapes certainly stand out, as well as the lines and the textures. I immediately realize that the best way to exploit these elements is to go macro and isolate the elements from the rest of the scene. So I start messing around with focal distances, camera angles, and composition until I find something that looks cool. So I'm going to zoom in here, kind of look at it uh, about half of it, and notice that most of the action here really looks like it's coming from the top. So I'm going to try to centrally locate this top part here after I check out the textures along here. This whole thing almost reminds me of a capital building dome or something like that. See what I mean? Kind of weird, isn't it? Anyway, I love the rust, uh, the repeated bolts going around. Okay, repetition shape. This is symmetrically balanced if I were to center it. It's also radially balanced. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to walk around here and see an angle that would be good. Uh, kind of looking at the other valves and so forth. Kind of zoom in on this bolt. Huh. Okay, well, that's kind of cool, but what I really want to do is capture sort of the overall. Uh, scope of this thing. And the best way to do this is probably from the top. Kind of just turn it into a uh, sort of a symmetrical circular type thing. Almost the top of a building type thing. So I'm going to try to stand directly over this thing. All right. Get it centered in my viewfinder and then I would compose it a little tighter or a little looser and then go ahead and snap the shot. That's kind of a cool shot. Very formalistic. Uh, you got your repeated shapes, uh, your textures, your colors, your lines, your symmetry, your balance. It's a very, uh, an interesting picture that someone may actually have to think twice about. By the way, you may wonder, well, why didn't you exploit the blue of that hydrant? Well, I have done that before. If you guys remember the episode on um, zoom movement, okay. Uh, movement, blurred movement with zooming the lens. I used this very same hydrant and it was very good uh, for that particular technique. This little mini park is one of my favorite places to go in my neighborhood because it has quite a few interesting things all compressed into a very tight area. 
As I look at this wooden bridge, the repeated shapes of the boards and the textures immediately come to mind and might make for some interesting shots. However, what I really want to do is see what I can discover in the creek that runs under the bridge. So I'm going to walk along here just for the heck of it and show you uh, how the creek runs on either side of the bridge. And uh, I'm just kind of looking around here for anything that uh, you know might catch my eye, like a fish. If I saw a fish here, I think I'd drop dead. It's a very shallow creek, uh, and I think it's just hill runoff. It's not uh, really a major creek. However, that doesn't mean anything. The camera doesn't care about that. All my camera cares about is capturing some cool pictures. So I'm going to zoom in, because I just love the way this water is rippling. And it's just, the movement is amazing. Um, how would this look as a still photograph? My guess would be that if I were to freeze this, it would make a very nice, cool, muted texture uh, from the ripples that would be contrasting against the smooth, unmoving textures of the rocks. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in here and slowly move my camera around until I find something that looks interesting. So, um, you're probably saying, wow, I don't see that much here. Hey, I'm experimenting. At least I'm keeping it, uh, keeping my mind and my eyes open for something here. Now keep in mind, all these things, I've been talking about design and formalistic qualities of photographs. Okay, I haven't really talked about the aesthetics. Aesthetics, in case you don't know, that is a feeling that is expressed uh, what feeling you get from when you see a picture, okay, or an image of some kind. You know, um, if you're expressing yourself in art, you should be trying to bring out some kind of emotion in the viewer. All right, so um, that's what it's all about. So what am I doing now? I'm still just kind of looking around. I've kind of done with the water. I'm done with the water, and um, I'm going to just look over here at the creek because something caught my eye. A little earlier there's a little bit of something blue over here and I believe yes there it is a couple of flip-flops I love the cyan color and a story could be told here all right the first thing that comes to mind is what happened to whomever was wearing these flip-flops secondly why did this person step out of them and suddenly disappear without wearing them could this be a crime scene of some kind or is it just a case of somebody being forgetful who now has some very sore feet well, you got the idea. At any rate, it is the bright color of the flip-flops that make them pop here, and having that art element leading one into a sort of mysterious situation makes this a potentially strong piece of art. As I zoom in, I realize that this shot is not as strong as it was zoomed out, where the scene was in the frame, giving the viewer a reference point and something to think about. Well, this lesson is running a bit longer than I planned, so I better start wrapping it up. One other suggestion for Shooter's Block I can offer is to simply go to the library or online and look at other photographers' works. This is where you'll find a plethora of ideas that you can get inspired by and then turn around and use that inspiration to create your own original art. Looking at others' art is by far one of the most effective ways to become inspired and learn all at the same time before you even pick up your camera to shoot. Well, that's about it for this lesson. I hope you've learned something new. Until next time, goodbye.